Here are my final predictions on how Tekken 8's story is going to start and end. At the time of this recording, we are one week away from Tekken 8 being released, and by the time I post this, we'll be even closer. So I took the liberty of going over every story cutscene that we've gotten from trailers, Tekken talks, TV spots, just anything really. I'm trying to piece everything together to see how Tekken 8's story is going to conclude. So I guess there could be potential spoilers if I guess any of this right, so don't get mad at me. But we got a lot to go over, so let's jump right into it. Now obviously the easiest part about this is Chapter 1, since we got a full 16 minutes showing us what that's gonna look like. And we thought that was it. We thought that was the entire first chapter of the game. 16 minutes isn't bad for the first chapter. Here's the problem though. The problem is that we then got the Tekken 8 opening video, which showed this scene. Kazuya walking towards Jin while buildings are falling behind both of them. New York is just decimated at this point. But this wasn't in the story. So I actually merged this clip into where I think it could be in the story, when a missile just comes flying out of nowhere. But I don't know, it doesn't really match up. And that's the biggest problem that we have here, is since we got the opening video, it's kind of hard to tell what's actually in the story and what footage was just made to promote the game. Either way, in the end, if it plays out like they showed us in the 16 minutes of gameplay, Jin and Kazuya fight, Jin gets the upper hand for maybe like two seconds, and then Kazuya just goes full bore and starts throwing hands and just shoots this giant beam down the city street that annihilates Jin and just everything there, knocking Jin unconscious. Now, there's a certain cutscene that they show here, which is Jin remembering his mother, June, but I want to talk about all the scenes with her a little bit later. So after all that happens, we see Kazuya just destroy a ton of satellites letting the world know that the King of Iron Fist tournament is happening. Every region needs to pick their champion to compete, and if their champion loses, their country gets destroyed, which is pretty intense. Like, you can't have any more pressure be put on a singular person than being like, yeah, if you lose this fight, it's Jover for literally everybody you stinking know. That, that would, that would, that would suck. That would suck. So after all that happens, we see a scene with a mysterious explorer who finds a cave that has ancient writings on the wall about Azazel, which for those of you that don't know, he is where the devil gene comes from. He's the source of that power, if I'm not mistaken. So I really do think that this character is gonna play a pretty important role in helping our heroes take down Kazuya. How? I have no idea, but it is what it is. And that right there concludes chapter one, or at least that's what they showed us. So now I move on to chapter two, which is where things can get a little bit muddy here. But my prediction is that the team recovers Jin's unconscious body. And for those of you guys wondering who the team is, if you remember at the end of Tekken 7, you see Lars, Lee, and Alyssa standing on a building, and then Jin appears from the shadows, the main four rebel fighters, on their mission to take down Kazuya. And then throughout the game, they're gonna recruit more of our favorite fighters, whether they just so happen to run into them, or actually like call them up and be like, hey, we gotta go kill this guy. So I don't know. And here we can see Lars saying, we need to protect Jin, because deep down, everybody knows that he's the only hope for taking out Kazuya. So I think they get back to the rebel base, Alyssa gives Jin a little bit of a pep talk, and then Lars and Lee want to help Jin train with his devil powers. Because we all know when he turns into devil Jin, he just loses control. Unlike Kazuya, who accepted it and has mastered that power, which is what gives him an edge above Jin. But when Jin tries to change into his devil form, it doesn't work. So they realize, okay, we gotta find a solution for this. But they also think about the tournament, and realize that that's where Kazuya is gonna be, and now it's their move. Maybe they figure he won't expect it if they come to him, or maybe that's exactly what he wants. So now I'm thinking there's a long cutscene that's happening, and the King of Iron Fist tournament is underway. And I'm thinking that Jin and his friends have an idea that since all the strongest fighters are going to be there, that is going to be their best chance to recruit whoever they can to help them take down Kazuya. And that's when we meet Reyna. Now whether we get to fight her or not, I don't know. That'd be pretty cool though. And I figure she's going to meet up with Jin at some point, tell him who she is, whether it's the lie or the truth, and say that she wants to join them taking down Kazuya. Because maybe she knows that he's the reason Heihachi's gone, and she wants to be sitting where he is right now, at the top of the food chain. One cool thing I want to mention here is this clip from an older trailer that shows Raven doing the iconic line, but it's like T8 rendered Raven, not T5. So I wonder if we'll kind of get to see a version of the Tekken 5 opening, but like remastered, because that'd be kind of cool. Seeing young Kazuya fighting Heihachi in the dojo, but they have to fight off the Jack robots. Again, it's one of those things that's like, is this just for the commercial or is this actually in the game? So I don't know. But at some point, Jin and Hua Rang are going to get to fight because there was a clip that was leaked online. I'm not going to show it, obviously, because I'm not looking to get my channel taken down, but we do know that Hua Rang teams up with Jin. I'm just happy that they actually get to fight again in the story mode. And as much as I'd like for my boy to win, unfortunately, Jin has plot armor and he's got the Shima blood, so he can't really lose. So here's really where anything can happen. I have no idea what is gonna happen when, but there are some moments in the story that we have gotten a lot of cutscenes from, and I've compiled them together to kind of talk about what I think is gonna happen overall. So here we go. My thoughts are at some point they're gonna head back to the rebel base with their new recruits to kind of regroup and figure out a plan. And then another thing we gotta remember is that Jin and his
his team aren't the only ones out there. Ling Xiaoyu, Claudio, Zafina, and Panda can all be seen in this one scene here running because they're all looking for Jin. And we know that they eventually do join him. The question is when and how. So I don't think any of these four fighters are going to be in the King of Iron Fist, even though it'd be smart for them to head there actually since Jin and his team would be there. The one thing that concerns me is how Zafina is holding her arm. Now we know she has Azazel's power trapped inside of her and Claudio has helped her to seal off that power to just her one arm, but her bio talks about how the seal is broken. So maybe they're looking for Jin to see if they can get more answers on how to heal Zafina of this disease without letting Azazel get a hold of her body somehow. Then of course we can't forget Victor and Raven who are working for the United Nations. Because right here it looks like Victor brought some men to inspect a certain place. And I'm thinking somehow that these little groups of characters that are together will eventually meet up and then all meet up with the Jin before of course the battlefield fight and the arena fight. Who meets who first? Your guess is as good as mine. But I think Victor will get more involved when Lars calls him up. Or maybe Victor will be the one to call Lars knowing the mission that he's on. Another interesting thing is this clip right here with Ling Xiaoyu charging at these jack robots who are invading Yakushima. I have two theories about this. This is where her, Claudio, Zafina, and Panda went or she's on some type of side quest, perhaps with Jin, who's trying to find a way to reconnect with his mother, whether she's dead or alive and he just needs to talk to her spirit to figure out a way to defeat Kazuya. So he figured the best way was to go home and maybe he's in some meditation state here and he's unable to fight so Ling has to hold off the jack robots. I don't know, I think that'd be a really cool story chapter though and it'd give them some time to bond and grow closer, you know? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm j if one relationship should happen in this Tekken universe, I'm just saying. Wait, how old is Link Shao Yu again? Now, whether that is a chapter in the game or not, at some point, Jin is going to be in his own mind or some sort of spiritual realm because we have this shot of him sitting on the log in what looks like a wasteland, which of course is a Tekken Tag Tournament reference. So I wonder if Claudio is actually going to be the one to help him enter this certain spiritual place since he's a pro at dealing with all that stuff. But this shot right here of Jin walking up to himself which then switches to a shot of him walking with chains around his arms. Like if the devil Jin has a hold of him and he's trying to break free. I'm wondering if that Jin he's walking towards is actually devil Jin in disguise. And as Jin gets closer, he'll realize it. And then maybe you have to fight devil Jin in the mindscape to either regain control of his power or to just get rid of him entirely. So I don't know, but that chapter is going to be awesome. And then of course we see in that mindscape that Jin talks to his mother. And here it looks like Jin is holding something, some sort of light. And some of you are predicting that instead of devil Jin, he's going to become like angry. Angel Jin or something. I don't know how that would work, but if he's using the power of light, then that makes more sense to me at least. And it would bring Angel back into the series, more or less, since she hasn't been canon since Tekken 2. So now we're down to our last three scenes here. The first one being the battlefield scene. Now I don't know if this is going to be during the final fight or maybe it's before it, but we know that the final fight is going to be Jin and Kazuya in that big stormy hurricane area. So I'm wondering if this happens just outside of the arena, because everybody that we see in the arena fight is here and even more characters but the battlefield scene is kind of self-explanatory i mean it's all of our characters just fighting each other and in none of these scenes do we see Jin or kazuya so this could be happening during their final fight honestly every time i watch this video i get goosebumps because the music just with all the characters fighting is just so good. So I don't really know what else to say about the battlefield scene, except that it's going to be awesome. So next up, we have the arena scenes. And starting it off, it's clearly daytime, and I'm thinking that it's Kazuya announcing the next fight for the King of Iron Fist. Because, I mean, why wouldn't it happen in this arena? So I don't really know what's going to happen here, unless this is the final fight. Because we see everyone there with Jin, with Leroy telling him to believe in himself. So I wonder if this is it. He's about to fight Kazuya. And then the next scene is Jin's team all standing there looking up at the sky, which is when I'm assuming Kazuya is transforming into his final form. And they all have to fight him. But then it's like, where's Jin, because you don't even see him again. Unless he tried to fight Kaz, got stinking knocked unconscious, and now they gotta try and hold their own until he wakes up. And I love this scene with Claudio because I feel like he's gonna be a heavy hitter when fighting Kazuya, since he deals with this demonic stuff all the time. And then we got Huarang and Lars charging straight at Kazuya. But if we're all honest, none of them stand a chance against him. Now, if I'm correct and Jin is knocked out, this could be the point to where he does talk to his mother and get that light, and it'll help him take Kazuya down. But not without them first flying to space. I talked about this in my stage review video, but I think into the stratosphere is where the beginning of the final battle is going to happen. Because let's be honest, what other character is going to be in space fighting on a meteorite besides Jin and Kazuya? Which then I think Jin is able to use that light to get Kazuya out of his devil form as the meteorite crashes down and lands on Earth, which then turns into the fallen destiny stage. And then we're finally here, the final confrontation between father and son. The announcement trailer for Tekken 8. Back where it all started to end it. 
once and for all. Probably the biggest theory people have here is that Kazuya no longer has his devil powers because his eye isn't red in any of these shots. And after an intense beatdown, I think that's when Jin will switch up tactics, use his mother's fighting style, and finally defeat Kazuya. I think I had a few other theories, but I can't remember them right now. But that's how I roughly think that Tekken 8 story is gonna go. Sorry, that was kind of a mouthful, but I can't wait for this game, guys. It's gonna be something truly spectacular. So let me know in the comments down below your own theories, and or if you agree with mine. And if you want to chat more with me, feel free to join the Discord. And I stream Tekken 8 with viewers every Tuesday. But thank you all so much for sticking through this entire video, and as always, you'll see me next time.